like people who are, yeah. are bigger and all, it is their choice. But I do feel that people can be responsible for their 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 weight more so than like you know like some people say oh you know it I have no control over it and I don't and I don't uh, uh, buy that fully lah. I would say you have less lah as a as a as a mother. Yeah. Already. So again, going back to the analogy, yeah. the penis length is very difficult to change. Mm, mm, Even mm. if you wanted to, how are you going to change it? If you lose weight, if you yeah. do this and all, yeah. your penis length not going to change, right? Uh, arguable. There's ways. I mean, I've. <laughs> is I, it? I've, 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 What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala, ba, 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 ba. your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. Ah, it's a parliamentary week. Yeah. Uh, is Parliament still sitting today? I think so, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were joking about how uh, after the last episode, just as we end, there'll be some bombshells coming out of Parliament, but not so much. Lah, right? Not so much. Maybe because this is the final parliamentary session under mm. Lee Sien Lung's watch. Mm. So they want to make, you know, like a little bit low-key, don't be too outrageous. There hasn't think. been any kind of like, you know, like, you know, ce- like, not say celebration, but uh, commemorating the occasion. Maybe at, at the end of today's Parliament or something on the 8th. There has to be lah. So you mean a round of applause or something? I don't know what they do in parliament. You know, they always bang the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what you call it? The The gavel. The gavel. No, the armchair. Oh, the armchair. Oh, yeah lah. They just bang the wood lah. Yeah, bang bang the wood. wood. (laughs) Bang the wood. Bang the wood. (laughs) Bang the wood wood Um, in parliament. But I mean, yeah, the Malaysian king was in parliament. Yeah, I just found it out before the podcast. Yeah, yeah. He was sitting sitting in parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time. Yeah, what's so surprising about that? Is them weird, right? We also go and sit in parliament sometimes. We sit in the gallery. Yeah, yeah. But he's the Malaysian king, right? So, there's all this talk about how, you know, we don't want foreign entities influencing our politics. Uh-huh. But, but then, not, I find it damn weird that he could come into parliament. He's just observing. Uh. I don't know. It's weird. Does, don't you think it's weird? No. Like, you can go and, you can listen to the full parliamentary session on YouTube if you want to. Right? Yeah, but as I say, you go watch a football game versus being on the bench. Right? One is you're a spectator. One is you are part of it. But being on a bench means also that you have participation in the game, but he doesn't have any participation in the game. Right? No, but even then, even if you are not a backbencher or even someone to go into the place of, in the vicinity of the bench, it's not open to anyone. Right? It's not, la, but I guess as a f- dignitary and all that, a foreign dignitary. Does it happen often? Um, foreign dignitary no, sitting in, in our parliament? No. But I remember Joseph Schooling was applauded in parliament and everything. But he didn't say lah. He didn't sit lah, but he was down there. It's not like he was in the gallery. Yeah, right? So come down and then fuck off lah. I don't know how long the Malaysian king stayed for. Did he stay for the whole thing? I don't know. We, we don't find know. Out. I, ima- I imagine if you are beyond a certain age or so, it's a bit, a bit sien to have to sit there for the whole session. Uh. It's like five hours long talking about <laughs> traffic violations and stuff. Like, why so, would you sit in? Okay, so for, for real, he's the first king of Malaysia to visit Parliament House with Parliament in session. Uh, so it is a first. Okay, no, I but re- he stayed the whole way. That's my question uh. Uh, or did he do a know. schooling and just like after the applause just leave the... I mean he was hosted by Speaker of Parliament Xia Kian Ping who also delivered a short address to the house to honour the king mm, mm. Um, and then I'm guessing he left uh, yeah, like, I don't yeah. think he can stay that long No, these VIPs they never stay for very long on uh, these events I still find it weird okay Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like you, for you, it's perfectly understandable that just a. Uh, it's understandable, uh, For I mean, who he is, like the king of our neighboring, our most immediate neighbor. Mm. If you told me it was like Nas Daily or something sitting there, I'd be like, "What the fuck, uh, You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like for a, a visiting foreign dignitary. But if it's a foreign politician. Also, yeah. I mean, if they hold a very big role in the government or something, uh. I think it's okay. Uh, it's observing the parliamentary process. Hmm. Just like how when we go, we also, I mean, yeah, we're also like big shots, right? We walk into, we walk in and like, oh, you never know what's... all our goods, is it? Yeah, and then, but you never know what's the next thing we're going to talk about, a podcast, what, what's going to drop, you know? Then, you know, we also observe parliament, Speaker right? of parliament got <laughs> give a short address to honour our presence. Never, never. But I had eye contact, I had eye contact with, at some point, with some... MPs like all that kind of thing. Oh, is it? You're like, oh, yeah. you're like, oh, 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 you're like, oh
Yeah. Maybe, maybe. We'll never know. Yeah, uh, never know. Never know. Mm. But uh, how else has the week been, Terrence? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty uh, interesting. You know, mm. like, stuff's getting busy. Everyone's getting busy. and Enjoying and the rain? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the rain much needed, much needed. I also now. had a lot of like uh, neck issues in the last couple of days. Mm. It has made me, uh, you know, very cognizant of like, very uh, appreciative of very basic things in life. Like, right? like what? Eh? Like swivel chairs. <laughs> like swivel chairs. Because I've had a lot of trouble turning my neck recently. Yeah. And like, I never realized swivel chairs are so freaking awesome until like, when you have to sit in a meeting, then you have to swivel to look at people. Like, uh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. But the so neck that, was just like a, a, a sitting or sleeping in the wrong position. Yeah, one of, one of those things. Like, so it's not like, a, what's the word? The um, chronic or anything. Like. It's not a long term thing. Like. Uh, I would say it's long term because I've I have these problems on and off ever since I was uh, in the uh, in the army mm. as a machine gun commander mm. where you had to carry very heavy things, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know after that I started to have neck problems. Uh, they have plagued me like occasionally since then. Uh. Oh, sure. Can't blame the army, but I'm sure you know whatever lifestyle choices I made along the way also also contributed to it, lah. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all about the choices you make, la. But yeah, la, your neck, your neck did seem quite bad yesterday, la. Yeah, yeah. yeah lucky I'm sitting directly in front of you. Correct, correct, correct. Or lucky we don't have like two guests, you know. Yeah, that would be very painful. But again, yeah. civil, civil chairs, chairs and this is not chairs. an endorsement of like the, the you chairs. know chairs you're seeing, la. <laughs> But I'm saying literally, like good civil chairs are really like important, la. Cool, man. Yeah. Anything yeah. for you that you've you've come to appreciate the last About couple of days? Or last About anything, la. Yeah. No, just the weather. Mm. Like raining at night. I mean, it's helpful that it for like at least where I say it's been raining a lot at night during yeah, the yeah. day, not so much. Uh, so it kind yeah. of cools the country down. Like today, I had to walk to our first meeting, uh, and I was like, hey, shit. There's no scorching sun burning the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was nice, like, it was nice. Yeah, over the weekend, I did spend an inordinate amount of time in the sun uh, last At week. the beach, right? At the beach, at the pool and everything. It was just, uh, oh, it's really torturous. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. At the end of it, you're like, why do you put yourself through these things? Uh? Yeah, yeah. Uh. But that's our Singapore weather, uh, right? Indeed, man, indeed. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, you know, again, we might sound like two middle-aged old dudes complaining about weather when actually young people... They might like it, lah, right? You mm. know, they might like this. The fact that Singapore is always hot, it's always hot and wet and everything. And traveling overseas has becomes more enjoyable, lah, right? When you get away from this weather. Yeah, lah, but that's like saying you make your life <laughs> shit so that your holiday it becomes more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, some you know, I've spoken to Germans and and Finnish people who uh, love our weather like nothing. Yeah, they la, rather la. sweat in the armpits than freeze in the cold, lah, right? Yeah. You know you you yeah. know these people as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, I will say like extreme cold. Also, I'm not the biggest fan. Like, mm. like having to wear like seven layers, you know, I yeah. I, I don't like that, lah. I like, like I like short periods of extreme cold. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. A short period of extreme cold is nice. Kind of like when you watch Game of Thrones, they can tra- they travel for like one two days. Suddenly they go into like the snowy territory. Yeah, then yeah one correct. two days back, eh? Then it's like bright and sunny. Oh, that'd be great. Maybe you go <laughs> JB like that. Yeah, like. yeah. Imagine <laughs> if you yeah you just drive to JB, then wow, fucking it's no, freezing. No, technically great. you go snow city, lah. Yeah, la, but how long? And it's so artificial. It feels so artificial. <laughs> Remember when we went to Dubai and then there was... Yeah. Uh, we actually went, what, snowboarding in Dubai. Snowboarding, right? yeah. And then after I mean, that, come out to the mall and have coffee. Yeah. And then the whole thing was... It just felt so surreal, right? The whole yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, There's just something off. It's a bit like when your brain cannot process like VR properly. But you thing. know, like now with the climate change, almost the weathers are becoming more extreme. You know, now it rains very heavy and it's hot as shit during the day, right? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe 10 years down the road, it'll snow at night then be hot as shit during the day. Yeah. At the, the rate know, we're going, like yeah. stuff changing. It's becoming more and more extreme. There was like even flooding and everything in Bukuma, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. I saw like images the of dogs, dogs swimming in the basement car park. Oh, is it? Yeah. And the, there was videos of like people's dogs like taking a dip. Crazy. Wow. Crazy, man. Yeah. Crazy times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, mm. Parliament's still set. Yes. We still have something, a couple of things to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, I guess we can we can jump into it. But before we jump into it, what, what, do, we, what do we normally say, Terrence? Uh, welcome to Yellow Butt. And if you're new here, please do consider subscribing or following wherever you're listening to this because it helps to train the algorithm to tell people that this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Mm. yeah and I mean, if you're on your phone, desktop now, you see the red or green button there, just click it. All right. Just click it. Leave us a review. And if you want to work with us, you can check us out at ministryoffunny.com. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, All right. Okay, cool. Uh, so, the first topic. Mm. Um, I mean, it's it's off the back of some horrible things that have been happening, or mm. one particular this year, mm. a horrible accident. Um, 
And uh, it was the discussion around the penalties for dangerous driving mm. uh, in Parliament. Um, and I mean, ahead of that, there were a bunch of questions that were that were raised like, towards mm. the the Ministry of Home Affairs. Mm. Um, and there were questions like, you know, how the LTA can deter the occurrence of similar accidents in high traffic areas. Yeah. How accident risk can be minimized in future through road design and traffic management. How many fatal accidents have occurred due to reckless driving over the past five years? Whether there's a need to review existing penalties. Mm. Uh, if there's a need to raise the relevant penalties. Um, whether it's good that we require all drivers to attend periodic refresher courses mm. and what measures are being taken to improve road safety. So a lot of these were put forth and uh, they were all responded to uh, in, in parliament. But, you know, just at the headline, right, um, penalties not for dangerous driving adequate will not be increased for now. Well, what 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 was your initial thought? Uh? Um, my initial thing was I was quite, uh, at first I was like, oh, how come MHA, Ministry of Home Affairs, is talking about road safety and, and traffic and all that, right? Mm. Typically, I would think it's LTA or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the, then I realized it's about the penalties. I think that's what a lot of the discussions were. Are the punishments, oh. uh, are the punishments enough, you know, for for incident, incidents of reckless or dangerous driving? Because I think that's where people, in this case in Tampines, that's where the most outrage is. Mm. In that, not in that, you know, it's not like he didn't get caught. He got caught and he, you know, he's being charged and everything. But we know for a fact already that the, you know, the punishment is not, I mean, in most people's minds, it feels like uh, it, it's not adequate, lah, right? And a lot mm -hmm. of people, lay people are looking at whatever he's going to get, like five to eight years or something like that for, you know, essentially ending two lives, lah, right? Mm. Instantly. Um, yeah, people are feeling like that's not fair because you talk about someone who's, who commits murder or what, you know, um, it's easily life imprisonment or 20 or 30 years or something. But you kill two lives with the choice, making the choice, that's what we're saying, of driving dangerously or recklessly. Mm. Uh, you get like single digit. Uh, yeah. So people are saying, is that adequate law? And that's what I think the, the most of the discussion actually centered around. That's why MHA was the one responding to all this. Oh, thing. that's true. Huh? It didn't occur to me that if it's, it's MHA. Yeah. So that means if they wanted to change the rules per se, it would be LTA. Um, Presumably, no, but but you talk about road safety, like yeah. what what things? Not necessarily, yeah, yeah, rules, I guess, yeah, road rules, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, LTA, yeah, but yeah, the punishments is yeah. MHA, yeah, yeah. No, actually, um, rules, I think, would, might still be under MHA, but then you would probably think the LTA would be fronting a lot of these things. Oh, right? I see, I see, I see. But now it's it's really about law, like, right? The mm. MHA side of things, like yeah, mm. and and I mean, all the MPs uh, asked, um, uh. Yeah, so even one of the people who asked the questions was the uh, MP who's the chairman of the Government Parliamentary Committee for Transport, Saktiandi Supat. Mm -hmm. uh, Supat. So there were a bunch of questions that were asked by um, uh, um, quite a few politicians. But basically, like what I, I read and what I heard uh, from the response was that, um, yeah, that that it's it's adequate enough and that the number of fatalities and accidents, number of accidents over the past five years have actually decreased. Mm, uh, mm, but mm. unfortunately, the number of fatalities has increased. Yeah. But um, even Amy Kaur came came out and said that the junction in particular, the Tampines Junction, where there were, because there was one question about whether that is going to be reviewed, the design. Yeah. She said the design it meets international safety standards. Mm. So just by looking at it, even without going through the details, it felt like... Um, they were trying to make the point that okay, it's safe enough. Mm. Uh, it is road safety is a societal thing that everybody plays a part in. Yeah, there have been improvements that have been made, and yeah, I felt didn't felt that urgent. Mm. Mm. Like whether mm. it needed something. Yeah, and that's where a lot of the uh, people are not very happy online, right? Yeah, some even calling out like I think uh, the MP police son she asked about oh what what. Uh, additional road safety measures can be taken at the, that particular yeah, Tampines junction to reduce accidents. And I think there were some threads on Reddit and all where people are flaming her saying like, what kind of stupid question is that? Because ultimately, you if you saw the accident videos and all that, there's nothing that could have prevented it because the guy just decided to drive a certain way. Mm. And whether it was red light, green light, amber, whatever, it didn't matter. He was just going to, you know, speed past that 
particular traffic light and no no amount of road safety measures or education could have prevent can prevent that lah, right? Yeah, yeah. So people are saying what's the point of that question? It's a more about now it's more about can we punish the guy more severely, lah, right? Mm. To, to send a message. Yeah. Um but that's where I think what they're saying is that actually Singapore already meets international st- uh we already our, our laws are quite adequate for that kind of thing already, lah, right? In terms of punishing them. Yeah, and I mean, this was all delivered by uh, the Minister of State for Home Affairs, Muhammad Faisal Ibrahim. Mm, mm. Um, so, so I mean, he, he 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 said all the stuff you would expect him to say, that, you know, the TP Traffic Police works with the land LTA to improve um, the road infrastructure. Mm. Uh, the government is fully committed. But, you know, after reading it and watching the videos, it, it still doesn't stand out to me what the reasons were for him. Like, do you recall? Mm. Like, they all felt like, Pretty textbook answers lah. Mm, I mean, I guess it's coming from the point that if you want to revise the law, right? Yeah. And and, and talk about the penalties and punishments, all that. Um, it's a it's not an immediate process that's like that, like mm. You know, there needs to be probably people need to research it. You know, find precedents elsewhere in the world and everything. And what he's coming back and saying is that actually what we have is comparable to what is practiced in other parts of the world and all that, lah, if, yeah. not, if not more, lah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, as much as everyone was very uh, disturbed by what had happened in Tampines and all that, you know, if you take away the, the emotional side of things, he's trying to say that, hey, logically, we already have this framework in place that for now seems adequate, lah, right? Mm. And understandably, a lot of people are upset about it and feel that it should be more uh, stringent and strict. But the law doesn't work that way, lah, right? Yeah. The law works on, on by, you know, following the book and, and interpretations of those rules that you set. So to want to open up the whole thing, it kind of, maybe it needs more than just one incident mm. or something to, to get people to, to, uh, to, to really push it along that way. Lah. And, and so he talks about other measures that are being put in place to try and um, deter speeding by, you know, the, whether it's the traffic police working harder or like technology, like cameras being deployed, more, more cameras being deployed around the island and things like that. Yeah. But why? So, I mean, I'm hearing from you, like you sound like you're not very convinced by this argument. Lah. I mean, because the thing is, so, so okay, so like like the specific things you said, you know, some of the things he said that um, 800, uh, so, so since last month, the TP has progressively activated the speed enforcement function in red light cameras across the island. Mm, mm. So uh, he did say that it's not possible to, um, to install them at all traffic junctions and zebra crossings. Mm. But in the six weeks that it has been there, they've already kind of like found 800, speed violations. Uh. Mm, mm. Uh, so that was done. And then he said that um, TP has also in- intensified ad hoc enforcement, detecting close to 1,400 violations and arresting 29 motorists for traffic-related and other offences. Mm. So it feels like they stepped up some stuff. Yeah. But I guess, okay, maybe, like, I also, like, when I think about it, I'm like, okay, like, for laws to change, yeah, like, like having a few incidents happen doesn't mean that the laws need to change. Yeah. Right, these could just be anomalies, and of course, now it almost feels like every day you open up, there is some accident that's happening. Mm, right, mm, maybe they are getting more airtime because that's at top of mind, and yeah. they know people will click, lah. Yeah. Right, but it feels like that, right? Yeah. I, I, but statistically, what he said is that number of accidents uh, resulting in injuries or fatalities has fallen about ten percent in the last five years. Mm, mm. Number of accidents resulting in fatalities has increased by twelve percent. Um, so it feels like less than what, uh, no, it, it is less than what it feels. Yeah. But maybe what affects this whole thing is, you know, the recent news about LTA mm. uh, with mm. the new ERP 2.0, especially when he said that the top cause of the fatal accidents between 2019 and 2023 were failure to keep a proper lookout and to have mm. proper control of one's vehicle. Yeah. You know, the first reason, failure to keep a proper lookout. Mm. Mm. So you have that reason and then you have ERP 2.0 where you are like literally forcing the driver to to change his yeah. seat position, la, which is yeah. gonna affect his lookout. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that we, with that context it feels like huh. Then on the flip side also, you know, re- our previous podcast we talk about Lawrence Wong saying that the government needs to spend time, you know, limiting child's screen time. Mm-hmm. So that feels like okay, there's efforts to move towards that. But this one, it just felt like, huh? It's like okay, it's adequate. 
Oh, you sound like an angry boomer. Like, huh. linking everything. Like, I know. I mean... And then, then blaming, blaming, <laughs> like, I'm the like, this whole thing <laughs> fucked up, you know? <laughs> fucked up. Then you got to be like, oh, you know, Lawrence Wong play guitar. That's that right. distracts everyone from the issue of yeah, like, the real in my issues. room, I got all these articles <laughs> and I got the red lines all connecting. Wow, that's really like... For maybe that's why the feeling after. is like, I was like, oh, okay, just adequate. It might be, it might mm. be. And it might just be that there's an emotional part of me that's feeling that. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think... Yeah, the emotion is valid. Uh. Like, people feel that it's injustice, right? Like, mm. even just watching that this guy, I mean, there were pictures of the the person who drove that vehicle. There are pictures of how he was just sitting at the side of the road, you know, like, uh, you know, just chilling, you mm. know, after, right after the accident while, like, the ambulance was, was there help trying to help people and all that. Uh. And people are angry about that. So there's a very strong emotional reaction to this accident and this, mm. this person uh, and the feeling of injustice that, he's not going to get punished adequately for this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to me, that's uh, the main thing, la, whether whether we the punishments are, are strict enough. Mm. So there are all these discussions uh, about, like, uh, you know, road safety education or having more traffic lights on it, uh, traffic um, cameras. That, to me, like, feels like a separate discussion from what the MHA the side of things is to be. Uh, it's about, can we, is that, is, does the punishment... Uh, is it enough for for these violations? Because there have been other... You remember a high-profile incident in the past where in Bugis, I think, there was a man who drove a Ferrari at like this insane yeah, yeah. speed and crashed in a taxi and killed the driver and, and killed himself. himself. Yeah. yeah, he killed himself and his passenger, like, right? But the, this innocent taxi driver who wasn't... I don't even know if he was like like driving or moving or just parked there or what. But uh, yeah, everyone died. Like, everyone perished at the same time. But this one, the guy who caused the accident, is literally even walking around, right? Mm. And becoming public enemy number one. And that's where I think you, you know, if you are a lawmaker, you kind of need to measure like, hey, the pitchforks are out. Like, this guy is public enemy number one. If he's, people know how he looks and everything, there might be, you know, it could lead to very unpleasant things like violence and things like that, like, right? So is there something that needs to be done to show that he's being uh, punished for various things, like, right? Mm. More, even more than just the accident, like, and unfortunately, if the law says it's this is the punishment, that's the punishment, right? And you can't amend it just because you want to find justice for this one incident, right? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it just like what you said, knowing that pitchforks might be out, that's also not the best reason to change a law, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah but yeah. but then like um, uh, you know, uh, shit, I lost my train of thought. But he he did say that the road traffic, uh, I mean, the RTA, the, the, the basically the laws are around mm. around the dangerous driving and all this were amended in 2019 mm. already and, and made harsher. So it shows that it can be, it can be changed, like, right? You yeah. Know, with the political will and everything, it can be changed. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to ask you, like, do you think, um, may, may, is there something also that the fact that nowadays, last time when you walk around Singapore, when you see a Ferrari on the road, it's like, whoa, that's a big deal. Like, wow, someone drive Ferrari, you know, like as a student or you walk past it, you'll be like, staring at it. You know? yeah. Now it's like, a dime a dozen. Uh, like everywhere you go, you sort of see a sports car revving down the road uh, and everything. Do you, do you feel that that also leads to people being angry about, you know, those people who drive super fast cars and and there's some maybe uh, resentment against them and how they treat Singapore like a playground? I think so. La. You think I, so? I think that is because... Uh, if you look at a recent incident where, like, uh, there was that Bentley, the guy was oh, outside yeah, yeah. scolding the teacher and all, right? School, yeah. The school, right? And then, no, um, he, he, he was almost running over a security guard or something. Uh, right? Something like, like The person who was, like, kind of yeah, like, ushering yeah. the kids, you know? So, immediately, it was, he's known as the Bentley driver. Mm, mm. You know, then, uh, even this one, there was the Mercedes driver who was, yeah. uh, and I think there is that sentiment of, like, I mean, last time, you know, like, when I was young, so I see Ferrari, I'm like, wow, look at that. But I can imagine now the sentiment is like, look at that Ferrari. Sense of entitlement. Yeah, look at yeah. this Ferrari. This is the problem with Singapore. And then all the, the boomer feelings come out. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know how much that contributes to the sentiment or, like, uh, tension on the road. Like. Yeah. It might, maybe it's like, in totality, people are just more tense on the road. Mm. Well, my question I wanted to ask you just now, because you've been driving longer than me. Mm. Do you feel like the conditions on the road, people's behavior and all has changed over the years? Uh, I've never felt that Singapore is a very pleasant place to drive, lah. Compared to compared to other places I've driven, mm. um, whether it's Europe, 
Japan, Korea, uh, US also. Mm. I've always felt like Singapore, not not because of the behavior of the of the people on the road like, per se, but uh, you know, I mean, it is because of the behavior of people on the road. But I feel like uh, more can be done to actually uh, discourage bad driving behavior, like, right? You know, uh, like my most recent trip to uh, an island in Korea called Jeju, it's twice the size of Singapore. But when I was driving there, I was, I, I was, it was quite remarkable how many times I had to slow down because there were speed cameras in the school zones. Mm. So like school zone or old people zone or what, regardless, there will be a speed camera. Whereas in Singapore, I felt like when you go enter school zones or or old people zone, there's no camera. It's a lot of times they say it's a zone, but there's no camera, no nothing to really enforce you slowing down and all that, right? Mm. Because in that process of seeing that there's a lot of cameras around every every everywhere I was driving in Korea, right? Um, it made me like consciously slow down at all these places, lah, right? Mm. Of course, you should slow down regardless, lah, right? When you see that is is thing, but there being a camera made you doubly more conscious of it. And and sometimes you even you even realize that you're actually going above the speed limit. Then you're oh shit, you really catch yourself. Whereas Singapore, I feel like there are these speed cameras littered around the island, but they're usually at like big expressways or big junctions and all that. And it doesn't make you more conscious of the the environment that you're driving in, like like a school zone or an old person zone and all that. Mm. So so subconsciously, I think the placement of these cameras matter. And I feel like in Singapore, they don't place them at. Either they, they only place them at big junctions or expressways, but they don't place them at the places where, where it would really matter, lah, where there are old people or there are young people, uh, uh, young kids hanging out and all. But then, you know, when you hear more cameras, mm. what is the feeling inside you? Do you have that feeling like, oh, you don't need to watch everything we do? So that's the, the irony. I actually uh. like it that there are more cameras on the road to prevent mm. people from speeding. Because uh. at the end of the day, as a human, like a human being just walking around, how much destruction can you do? But when you're in this like flying uh, box Bullet, of yeah, metal, yeah. flying at 100 kilometers per hour, how much damage can you do? You do so much more damage, you know? Yeah. So to, I mean, even as a pedestrian, I would want there to be more cameras to catch this kind of thing, right? Mm. As opposed to, I mean, if you if you speed on Lonnie, not, not condoning it, but you speed on Lonnie, you're on the expressway on that, there's no passenger, there's no pedestrians at yeah, all, right? Uh, the, the kind of harm that you cause versus if you speed at like even a little bit more than than the what it is, what is permissible in a school zone or old person zone, mm. the kind of harm that you can cause in those zones is much more than you would in like on an expressway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I feel <clears throat> in a lot of places I've driven, I felt like, hey, actually Singapore, like, uh, like almost easy to get away with with like bad bad driving etiquette lah. Mm. I find so I I I've always found Singapore like wow right, very tense and very almost like feels like wow well, you better look around the corner because you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I think for me the bigger thing that is stood out because I mean I I drive when like uh once in a while when I get like my my wife's family car and all. Yeah. Um. Then like uh I find the tension thing right is the mm. thing that stands out to me most. If in you Singapore. Like, yeah. On the road, right? Because I can imagine in Jeju, it's twice the size of Singapore, but population is a lot less, mm, la, yeah, yeah. a lot less dense, la, yeah, right? Yeah. But in Singapore, everyone is on edge, you know? Yeah. And like, I sometimes, I find myself like, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm getting on edge because you're, you're, you're just like in a, it's like every man for himself on the road. Mm, la. mm, mm. And I find like, there's, there's something, there's something, and I often have that thought also, like this is literally, I don't want, like, thousands of people drive cars every day with so much freedom. Yeah. Like, even if you talk about giving your iPhone to a thousand people to hold, yeah. probably someone will drop it. Lah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But here, thousands of people on the road just driving this car and like, yeah, okay, this, uh, you don't want cameras everywhere, but um, yeah, lah, maybe a bit more enforcement. Like I, I found out only from Amy Kaur's speech that um, apparently over the past few years, uh, they have been, they've slowly changed the discretionary right turn. Mm, mm, you know, mm. um, which also one of those things that um, yeah, I think since 2018, they've replaced the discretionary right turns at over 1,200 uh, traffic junctions. Like. So what I understand this to be is like, normally for the one where you're turning at a cross junction, yeah. there is just a green light yeah. uh, that where there's oncoming traffic and you make the call whether to go or not. Yeah. Whereas now mm -hmm. there is red, yellow, the arrow, green. Yeah, the, the green. green like. yeah. yeah, which before that, right, it always boggles my mind that you're leaving this choice to people to make. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it is in other countries. I haven't, I uh, like most of the places where I've ridden is like scooters, la, so like islands or something. But yeah. big cities, 
Do you know how it works in other countries? There are, there are discretionary turns. Uh, mm. But um, Singapore, because a lot of times we have a high, a lot, like you said, uh, a lot more traffic yeah. in, in you know highly populated areas. So yeah, the discretionary right turn is literally you're making a decision about oncoming traffic. You're making a decision about pedestrians crossing yeah. at the same time yeah. while you know in your own vehicle. So it, it was always a, a weak point for me that I feel like yeah, like, they're trying yeah. to address now. Like. Right. But I mean, I can understand like, okay, that sometimes can be a bottleneck because like, mm. the right turns always there. But, but it just felt like I was leaving too much responsibility to people on the road. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And in this case, yeah, I also think that there... And, uh, another thing that's going to make me sound like a boomer, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. One of these things that we always hear that for drugs, right? Mm, deterrence mm. are damn powerful. Yeah. If you want to stop behavior, the deterrent, the punishment must be so high and we have seen the results. Yeah. La. But for yeah. driving, right? It, that doesn't apply. Yeah. So, but I mean, don't you feel that sometimes it's not so much, I mean, the rules and the rules are everything, but sometimes it just come, boils down to people's, uh, you know, kind of like, unfair, I'll not say unfair, la, but people's unrealistic expectations about things in Singapore, la, right? Mm. For example, uh, I know you are one, so I, I think you're a good uh, person to ask. Okay. Those people who are stickler for arriving on time, you know, in Singapore. Uh, you know, you go to any other country, right? Uh, China, Thailand, or anywhere with like any kind of traffic. La, and then you see the building down the street. It's like, it looks like it's really close by. But it's fucking far. You call the car to come here. The it will take like 40 minutes of traffic to get to somewhere that looks like it should be five minutes away. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Singapore, you see the building there, you feel like, you feel really confident you can get there within five minutes, right? Mm. And so it breeds this unrealistic expectation where people don't think about driving safely in traffic or, you know, mm. waiting for things because there's an expectation Singapore must be on time. Right? Yeah. You uh. come like one minute late, that's rude to the person. And I've always found that like, it, only in Singapore where, where like, people have this like expectation that you cannot be late for something. Like, mm. Do you feel like uh, like that, that is I mean, unrealistic? I still think know? it's good to be punctual, Terrence. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it's good to be punctual. But the, the thing yeah, is... But, but, no, no, but, but it's good to be punctual, but when you can predict... Yeah, so let me get to the okay, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying... Because I also find that like yeah. when... Let's say if I have my, my the, the access to the car, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to somewhere. Mm. Because my expectation is like this normally takes... 20 minutes. Mm, correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. So then, okay, I leave at like 9.35 yeah. to get there by 10. But yeah. the moment there's some unforeseen thing, uh, or traffic, right? traffic, then I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to be late and blah, blah. Then, I, then I feel the, the tension mount up. Yeah, yeah. And I do, as much as I, I didn't like that you put it that way, <laughs> okay, because punctuality is still good, I do agree with you that there's this expectation, right? Yeah. That is a bit too idealistic. Mm. And when that fails, right, yeah. It puts people into this mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that is a huge problem in Singapore. So you like you 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 expect yeah, yeah. that of people and, and then you give hey, people the Over the years I've gotten better, like, okay? <laughs> I don't message you ETA anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, like. I get, I get, yeah. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Last time you like i like, I tell you I'm like five, ten minutes away because of traffic. Then you're ETA, 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 like multiple times in one hey, no, no. exchange. Not multiple times, like, okay, yeah. okay, like a couple maybe once, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know I think last time it feels like you would purposely take longer when you when I message you. I ETA. wasn't purposely, yes, exactly. <laughs> You you think that I'm purposely taking longer, but I'm telling you, I'm literally trying to fight traffic, and like you don't believe. You just think I'm purposely. Because I know doing that annoyed you, like I know that yeah, annoyed yeah, you. Annoying, yeah, but see, I don't do it anymore. Uh, right? Okay. See, people can change. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Punctuality is still virtue, uh, still good, but yeah, la, You need to have more leeway, la. Yeah. And I think in Singapore there is an unrealistic expectation because even when I go down to the train station now, yeah, yeah. If I ever see seven minutes for the next train, right? Ah, uh, you're angry, right? I feel like fuck. It, but in some ways. All those breakdowns of the MRTs in those previous years, yeah, kind of changed people's mindsets about train travel. Tra tra yeah, even train travel cannot be hundred percent predictable. Your timing. But don't already. you think it's gotten back there? Now it's, it's now it's back. It's better already. Yeah, like, right, it's better. Fewer breakdowns. But yeah. there was this period when there were just so many breakdowns happening. Like if someone messages, hey, sorry, I'm late. MRT breakdown. You're like, oh, oh okay, yeah, like, okay, okay. <laughs> Whereas like twenty years ago, I don't think that was a thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like I feel like in Singapore, in some ways, um because we're so efficient, we've been trained to almost like, traffic cannot be so bad. I, yeah. like, I can speed more faster and overtake here, overtake there and then I'll reach there in time, you know? Yeah. I, I really think so because you can imagine when you hear stories of people from abroad, like going to work, they'll say, okay, I budget two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I reach yeah. one hour, great. By budget two hours. Yeah. Singapore, I think, is almost like, okay, like the minimum required, we add a bit of buffer. Yeah. And when things go wrong, and I think more often than not, things, some shit happens. Yeah, happens like. yeah. 
Grab so, yeah, so, so feel like Singapore is tense. And you know, even walking on zebra crossings, right? Uh, uh. Last time, I think uh, I would be less conscious of like, okay, the car actually stopping before yeah. I walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it feels sometimes they will go so fast right up till the end. Yeah. And yeah. it feels like, oh shit, like uh, if I didn't really stop and make a move, like hint that I'm going, would they have just driven past? Mm. So it just feels like everyone's tenser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so you, now you add cyclists Cyclists uh, to cyclist. the mix also. Yeah. We have a lot more like recreational like Oh, that's true. Uh spandex warriors. You know, yeah. Big groups, twenty of them riding Who just time. gonna caught also, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this sense of so this sense of entitlement is not just about people who drive big cars, right? Yeah. yeah. You also feel that hey, how come these cyclists like hog the lane or, you know, ride abreast when they're not supposed to. And yeah. Like that, like, and I mean right? even pedestrians, not not so innocent also. Sometimes I see people on their phones, right? Yeah. Like, let's say, because at traffic lights, uh, if the road is clear, sometimes yeah, yeah. people walk first, yeah. right? But if you are walking first, you kind of walk fast. Like. Mm-hmm. I've literally seen some, because I'm sometimes the person to just, okay, road clear, yeah. relax, I'll, still, I'll still walk. Like. Yeah. But the person next to me on their phone, yeah. they just follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they walk at a very slow pace. Mm-hmm. Then, like, uh, it, it, it's super dangerous. Like. Yeah. So I think uh, it, it's one of those things that because the behavior is changing on the road, it's like the rules also need to, I don't know. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, you're right. You because can... even the junctions, the big junctions, traffic junctions when I was traveling in Korea. Yeah. Like they will have, rather than just look at the traffic light, like they'll have these strips on the floor that light green and red oh. for you to walk. Which is like people all looking down on <laughs> their phones like, now. <laughs> the best way to do it is like literally put the light on the floor, right? And, and I think Boogie's Junction, they, they, they do no, it. They do, they do yeah, that. Yeah, they do that. I don't know whether it's still, but I've seen it before. So, so my thought is like, we can do that more. Yeah, we can do Singapore. that more. In exactly. fact, we should because, you know, people are looking down at their phones. So the best way to ensure that they really see it is like put it on the floor. So the, the I think we should not discount the fact that uh, more can be done yeah. to make, it a safer environment for for whether it's drivers or pedestrians or cyclists and all that in Singapore. Yeah. La. And 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 the rule the, the laws aside to punish, you know, errant drivers, I think more can be done at the like LTA, the Ministry of Transport level so Yeah. Right. And I mean it's not a Singapore only thing because just from Googling, like in Australia, there are discussions in Parliament to review the speeds for uh, uh Victorian roads. Yeah. In BBC there is MPs calling for tighter rules around uh, new drivers specifically. Mm. Then I chanced upon this article on Bloomberg that talked about how in the 70s, the rate of fatalities in Netherlands and the US was relatively the same, for, okay. for, which was bad. Yeah. But since then, the Dutch have brought it down so much because their philosophy towards roads and road sharings and spaces on the roads changed a lot. Yeah. There were protests in the Netherlands in the 70s after, I think, a series of road accidents. Yeah. And it it, it changed. Mm. Um, and and yeah, so that's why I agree that like uh, maybe maybe reviews are being done. I don't know. I don't know how often road reviews are done, but the response felt a bit like, okay, you know, they are adequate. Yeah. And all that. Without acknowledging that, yo, people are go- interacting with roads differently now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. Well, our behavior when our walking behavior. around yeah. is different. Yeah. So in some sense, like, yeah, like we reacted very quickly for PMDs, right? And mm. how they were endangering pedestrians. Um, so why can't, you know, why can't we do something more for road users, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, change constitution also can react very fast. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, okay lah. I mean, aside from this kind of boomer. snarky, snarky, <laughs> like boomer. The boomer in boomer here. Like, shit. Hold, hold it down, man. Hold it down. Literally, yeah. like, no other country was banning PMDs, all right? Yeah. Singapore just said, we don't care. We're just going to ban it, lah, right? Yeah. So all this idea about international precedent, you know, sometimes you use international president. Uh, that's true. Uh. It's like, hey, why like that, you know? Meet international standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we say that our, our PMD, censorship, our censorship, our censorship also meet international standards? <laughs> our mainstream, our media, media <laughs> ma, uh. ranked, uh, ranked uh, in the freedom and the press. We don't care about ma, international standards. Yeah, don't yeah. Ma, uh. So I feel like, yeah, la, this international standards thing cannot pick and choose. La. You know, you want to mm. use, use for all. La. Yeah. Interesting. Uh. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, but thank you for not, you know, not set, texting the ETA thing anymore. Oh, yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Terrence, you forget, I take feedback into account. I'm a bitch about it, but I take feedback. It uh, takes many years. Hey, right? fuck you, <laughs> lah, okay? Take... It did not take many years, okay? It did not take many years. Yeah, they, yeah, we, yeah. Before, we didn't have a podcast then. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we didn't talk about it. It didn't take many years. Okay, okay, okay. Don't give me that nonsense. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, you know, um, speaking of yeah, taking feedback into account and all that, right? Uh, um, 
there's been a lot of outrage about something that has come out over a very what's supposed to be a very happy occasion, uh, right? Mm. And uh, yeah, you know, this brand has seems to have taken to feedback, but but maybe we want to examine what this what this outrage is about first, like uh, this marketing campaign. Mm. What is it? Uh? Uh, it was the marketing campaign for uh, Osim, mm, mm. where they basically, I mean, it, it first trended on Reddit, uh, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and they had a Mother's Day ad a picture mm. where it was for one of their devices. La. Like mm. in the picture, there's a handful of devices actually uh, that is meant, I guess, for reducing tummy fat. Mm, mm. So for Mother's Day, the sign they put was beat her belly bu- bulge. bulge. <laughs> beat her belly bulge. <laughs> So on Reddit, it started uh, trending. I think it got like a th- almost 2,000 upvotes, 400,000 views um, because people were saying that, yo, doesn't this kind of like encourage domestic abuse and mm. fat shaming? Mm. Uh, and Osim has since kind of like taken down the ad, apologized. Um, and um, yeah, la, that was that. La. But but I think people are just kind of talking about how how did this happen in the first place? Like it's mm. obviously so bad. Yeah. Uh, but then I was thinking, wait, is it? Is it obviously that bad? Or is it wokeism? Wokeism gone is wrong. It wokeism. Yeah. Uh, yeah, la. So, so <laughs> but uh, I mean, Mother's Day is also coming up, right? Mm. So, uh, um, uh, happy soon to be Mother's Day to all mothers out there. But for this, right? What are your thoughts, Terence? Um, a lot of people saying, how could they have possibly? got approved and all that, like, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to speculate. I'm going to speculate that the original tagline was probably closer to beat the belly bulge. Mm. And because they wanted to encourage people to buy these as gifts for their mothers, so they changed the the to her, beat her belly bulge. Like, you are helping her beat her belly bulge. So actually, it was a slogan by Osim earlier in the year, mm. beat the body bulge. Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. So, so I think because I think when you use the and her, uh, very different uh, connotations already, la, right? Yeah. Uh, but I did want to ask you, la, uh, when you see that beat her belly bulge, which, like, they say it can, could spur two kinds of, like, uh, uh, emotions, la, right? One to do with fat shaming, the other one with domestic violence. Which one do you do you really think that these two uh, are being uh, you know encouraged by this? I think because for context also for people who haven't seen the ad, the way yeah. it is placed is is the first top line is beat her, yeah, and then below slightly to the right is belly bulge la. Yeah, yeah. So, but going to your question, when I see it, do I think of domestic violence? Uh, uh no. Yeah. Uh, I just thought it was a slogan that was not that good lah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you? No, I thought the. Domestic violence thing was a bit of a stretch, la, the, the the criticisms of domestic violence. Because mm. beat her belly bulge. Uh, I, 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 I think, yeah, you can say, like what you say, like the placement of the words, all that. But um, the, the word beat doesn't always mean uh, like punch or, or anything. Beat her. Beat her. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> how often you say the phrase "terrorist"? Beat her. Exactly. The side, the side, the the and the her is a it's very a big, big thing, like big, big huge thing. difference. That yeah, that I can see how as a marketer, maybe you like, oh yeah, let's just go with beat beat the belly bulge, but let's make, encourage people to buy the gift for oh, their mother. Day. So it's beat her help beat her belly. There's that's why maybe they put the word help in front. Help beat her belly belly bulge. That one you asking for gang <laughs> domestic violence. <laughs> help help me. Hey, in Singapore her, husbands yeah, yeah. all sharing their wives now. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's so, right. Like, yeah, help yeah. help her beat help beat her belly bulge is an invite for a gang. Uh, just just to add context in ca- in case you want to cancel Harish for saying husbands sharing their wives. They're talking about that one this, case la. There was a case where these men were like, you know, a criminal case in fact where they were sharing yeah. uh, uh involuntarily sharing sharing their Voluntarily wives. Voluntarily sharing, sharing their, their wives, incapacitated uh, wives. Yeah, it was a nasty yeah, in thing. case you're a foreigner thinking of moving to Singapore, it's yeah, not a no, thing that happens yeah, very it's often. That happens. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, isolated cases. Yeah. Uh, um, but but yeah, yeah I, I, but to me the fat shaming thing was the more yeah. egregious one, la. Like because it's her belly bulge. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's like yeah. you are pointing out to your mother that she got a belly bulge, la. Yeah. Which I think you know, as as anyone who you know has as kids or that mothers go through a lot for childbirth mm. that a lot of things out, out of their control and it's not easy to you know work your body back don't don't look at Instagram and all the Instagram mums and all that who mm. 
the, the like a month after they give birth, suddenly they're back in the gym exercising. Because of their commitment and yeah. willpower. Yeah. And solely yes, because of that. Yes. Yeah. They, they, they also, I mean, you have to get personal trainers, hire personal trainers. Yeah. Of course, you can get, you can beat the belly bulge, but for the most part, it's, 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 it's tough, lah, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I did feel that the fat shaming thing, I, I, I can vibe with that. Lah. That but one if is it was, like valid. If it was beat the belly bulge? Um, then it's, I think it's okay. Yeah, of course, it's, it's more of like, I mean, it's a real thing for, for women, right? They, they think about how their bodies yeah. change after pregnancy and all that. And if they choose that they want to, you know, uh, use a device to, to make it better, uh, that's okay. Lah. Yeah. But, but then I, I guess it's the moment you put it in the hands of someone else to, to tell the mother to do it. Lah, so right? what if it's beat his belly belt for Father's Day? For Mother's Day. For Father's Day. Oh, for Father's Day. Because this is not specifically postpartum. Right? Correct, correct. Yeah, it's just yeah, a yeah. slimming device. Just slimming device. It was beat his belly bulge, Terrence. Yeah, it's still fat shaming in some way, lah, right? Uh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe it wouldn't cause as big a, a thing. Because for guys, we don't go through that. Yeah. That the, the big thing called pregnancy or motherhood, mm. lah, right? Well, we do NS what then, right? I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <all right>? I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're going, you're going to link it to like <laughs> yeah, you know, right. income inco- inequality <laughs> in Singapore and race. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so maybe for guys it's not a bad, but with, for mothers especially, yeah. they have been through this like, uh, you know, quite, quite, uh, something quite traumatic to the bodies, all right? Mm. Uh, so to, yeah, to suddenly say that, almost like shame them for it, like, oh, you got belly bulge, let, uh, help you, let me help you beat it. And I mean, even just the nature of the, like, generally clothing, right? Yeah. Women's clothing tends to be more fitting, la, right? Mm, okay. I would I would say that, yeah, yeah tend yeah, to yeah. be more fitting. I'm like, waiting for you to finish what you're Yeah, saying. because that belly bulge, it is yeah. not just pregnancy. Yeah, As I've yeah. gotten older, yeah. like, there's this little part of the belly that yeah. it's just bulges. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind bulges of, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So, but thankfully, as a guy, you wear slightly baggier t-shirts, you yeah. can you can uh, uh, hide it. Yeah. But for, like, for women, and I think it is a, a, a fair generalization that, yes, they also have baggy clothes, but they also, like, have fitting clothes. Some guys mm. choose to wear fitting clothes. Yeah. But, like, as a guy wearing a t-shirt, it's more common, la, baggy yeah. t-shirt. Yeah. So, this belly bulge thing, I would imagine, like, why I find it's not the best tagline is because even when you're shopping, right, mm. whether it's his or her, mm. if you're with someone, yeah, Let's say you're like like I'm I'm with my wife or someone is with uh their husband and he says beat his belly bulge. The first yeah. thing you go to look at is what? He's gonna look at his belly, his belly yeah. All right. Yeah. So then it feels like as a tagline it's pretty shit. Mm. Uh but yeah, I also agree that it's more the the gender next to the belly bulge that makes it feel like a bit too targeted. Yeah. To beat her Yeah, I think it's a bit of a stretch also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because <clears throat> yeah, like, the belly bulge thing really is as a mother and going through pregnancy or that it's not something like you can really control right mm, it, unless just, it just happens unless yeah. you say beat her belly bulge when she's pregnant which means you're beating the <laughs> yeah, kid which is even worse uh. or even like talking about oh it, in fact it's unhealthy for the child if the mother is not like having a you know if, if it's too small, too anything, small right? uh. so you don't want to encourage mothers to worry about their weight and things like that when they are pregnant and all that yeah. so it, I mean I guess the equivalent would be for men would be like uh, lengthen his penis, you know, with this device or something like that. What <laughs> different <laughs> like, parents? No, yeah, but my point is, cannot, it cannot be controlled one, uh, right? No, the but the, the belly bulge or belly yeah. fat, you you can control it. Uh. Ah, be- why, why can't control no, it? No, I really think, like, I mean, okay, for, for, for people who have, uh, like, uh, really Harish genetic fat issues, shame, fat, shame, yeah. hey, fat <laughs> shaming and just, like, like uh, uh, um, the, the fact of the matter is that I know there are people with, with um, certain genetic issues that maybe they can't, they can't process the fat yeah, that well. Yeah. But I do believe that for the most part, if you really die-die had a gun to your head, you need to lose weight, most people can. Like. Penis length, right? Different. No, but I think, but the point here is that it's a Mother's Day campaign. Yeah. And but as a mother, not... you have to get pregnant and your body will stretch, will stretch regardless of how you control it. Correct, right? la, but the, the belly bulge applies to like even women who have not been pregnant, men who have not been pregnant. Yeah. I just think this is a Mother's Day thing that I don't think it's only for people who have been through pregnancy. La. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, what, what I'm saying is that because you were saying that belly bulge can control, la, I think my thing is that a lot of Mother's belly bulges, they have to be there, right? Correct, because correct. you are you are giving birth. And yeah. If, if there was no belly bulge, I mean there was no pregnancy. Like, okay, right? it's yeah, yeah, more yeah. controllable than your penis length. 
uh, yeah, I, my my point was that yeah. if you say say something that uh as a the belly bulge, like if you try and make it sound like it can be controlled, I think the point is, is that mothers you don't want them to worry about the the belly bulge when they're pregnant and all that lot, right? After that, okay, after yeah, being yeah. a mother, yeah. you want to lose weight or what, you can choose But I don't think this is during pregnancy. Why? It's not, it's not. But yeah. I think the point is because it's a Mother's Day thing as yeah. well. And in, inevitably, being a mother means being getting pregnant and everything. Yeah, yeah. So you will, by no, you have no choice. You have to, you will have that belly bulge, right? Yeah. So that choice is taken away from you in terms of like, there will be a belly bulge for you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's, so that's why I said the equivalent is like if you are making a, you know, making shots at a guy for his penis length or so, which is I still about think it's being controlled. Because to me, it is not just the immediate time after a pregnancy where there's a bulge. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think, like to me, this is a campaign towards mothers regardless of when they gave birth and all at yeah. various stage of like physical fitness. Yeah. I didn't see it as that necessary bulge yeah. that comes right after pregnancy. Okay. I'm saying that even that, if you look at a time span of five, six, seven years, technically, it's yeah. more controllable than your penis length. Correct. Technically. La. So, I think yeah. now we're arguing about you know, the technicalities. The yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm trying to make sure that you're not saying that, that, that uh, you know, you're not fat shaming women for having belly bulge. Because that's, that's what it sounds like no, to me. No, I'm yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, the, then you're talking belly bulge at what point? Two days after pregnancy? Of course, that's uncontrollable. Yeah. But 10 years after pregnancy, yeah. I do believe that if you really want to lose weight, yeah. that if you had no choice, if your life depended on it, mm. most people can. La. Mm. So again, uh, you're blaming the individual who for yeah, la, their life choices after pregnancy. La, basically. 10 years after pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. years after pregnancy. So being a which mother. Which means like a normal person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so okay, okay. So <laughs> yeah, that's why I put me in a corner. I put you in a corner because no. becoming a mother or that also comes with certain, even beyond giving birth and yeah. everything, there are things that happen to your body that, that kind of change you change uh, the mm. composition of your body and all that as well. Uh, mm. Which I think, you know, it, it's it's something that yeah, like, I only realized after mm. I became a parent and I, I watched the whole process as well. Uh, right? mm. So again, yeah, I wouldn't put a time frame to it that oh you you know, only like during your pregnant period of pregnancy, belly bulge is not your fault. But after that it's your fault. I'm not saying it's your it? fault. Like people who are yeah. uh, bigger and all, it is their choice. But I do feel that people can be responsible for their 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 weight more so than like you know like some people say oh you know it I have no control over it and I don't and I don't uh, uh, buy that fully la. I would say you have less la, as a as a as a mother yeah already. so again going back to the analogy yeah. the penis length is very difficult to change mm, mm, even mm. if you wanted to how are you going to change it if you lose weight if you yeah. do this and all yeah. your penis length not going to change right? uh arguable this least I mean I've <laughs> Is I, it? I've, I've 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 heard of things, you know, like I've heard of things, not for myself, not for myself, because of course, I'm completely I'm completely happy and everything. But I've heard of things like, I mean, guys, for example, like uh, I mean, just as a tangent, like uh. if you lose a lot of weight, there's a lot of fat around your groin area, right? Mm. And apparently, like, visually, that will help you also uh, look more endowed, lah, right? Mm. So I'm not saying that, yeah. I mean, but okay, back to the point. So my point is, yes, uh, penis length cannot be cannot be fixed. Uh, like, it's, there's much less control, right? Mm -hmm. But I would say where I disagree with you is that it's not, um, it's not as, as easy for I'm not any saying mother. It's easy. I'm not I, it's, easy. It's, it's, but it's, it's harder. It's harder for mother to just go back to, of you know, course. pre- pre-pregnancy kind of uh, body and all of that. Of course, it's harder, yeah. but it's also very hard to run like a marathon in three hours, but that you can take steps to get closer there. I know, I know. To me, penis yeah. length is something you cannot change because it's biological. Yeah, yeah. Unless so, so, you've got cosmetic surgery or something. Okay, like. okay. So that's why I'm saying that maybe coming from you or us as guys, uh, saying that, hey, it's, it's totally something that you can control your okay, belly box. I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm just saying it's very hard. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I also don't say that you have absolutely no control over it. People have control correct, over correct. their lives, their career and all that. And sometimes you just, everybody makes decisions. So like. because what I'm hearing you saying is, so, is that if it was just beat the belly bulge, mm. you're totally okay with that. Uh, target, uh, product targeted at women or mothers, right? Yeah. But the tagline is beat the belly bulge. You're yeah. okay with that. Uh, how are they targeting the mothers? It's a product for mothers who maybe want to beat their own belly bulge or what lah. Yeah, I mean, if it's not part of the marketing campaign and it's mm. for anyone, sure. Mm. Even though the bigger issue I have is 
I don't think a machine can just isolate the fat in that it area. Can't, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. to me, that is a big issue that is not being addressed. Yeah. But if the marketing thing, the slogan is just beat the belly bulge, I have less of an issue. La. To, to me, like, yeah, I have an issue with mm. beat the belly bulge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Because to me, it, it, to me, fundamentally, I think that it's, uh, yeah, la, it's just preying on this, uh, on insecurities that any new mother or mother of uh, children has for years, even beyond just that pregnancy period. La. That means if it's couched in a Mother's Day campaign? If it's a product uh, targeted at mother's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so how is it targeting targeting mothers? Because like, if it's a product targeting mothers, then I also have an issue with it. But it's, I thought you said as a product that no, it's, it's targeting there. mothers for mothers. Like they say that it's, you know, it's for mothers post-pregnancy or whatever, like, you know. Mm. Then that's why I, I, I mean, I, I just in general don't think that this this idea of focusing on the belly bulges is like a, is a, something to, to to really market in this way. So like, let's say if it's not Mother's Day campaign. Okay, then yeah, I think it's okay yeah. like, if it's generally for mm. for women more that. But if because it's if it's a product targeted to mothers, then I think like you can't use this. Uh, you should not be using this beat uh, this belly bulge thing like. No, yeah. no, the the beat thing I'm out of it, but the belly bulge thing I'm like. Eh, yeah, if it's targeted oh, towards cool. Mother's Day, then I also feel that's not the best slogan. But if it's yeah. a general product, yeah, uh, even though it sounds ludicrous, beat the mm. belly bulge. That one I got no issue like. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, nah, we, yeah. Nah. Come on, yeah, maybe maybe it comes from a place of like yeah, like I've 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 witnessed the you know the the yeah the the sacrifices that a lot of young mothers have have to make. About so you got things. you got the moral high ground, like, Yeah, yeah is, is it? it's a moral high ground. I'm the moral high ground. Watching over you, but but yeah, overall I just find yeah, like, just not a great way to hang their marketing for this product on like. Yeah, and I was trying to like pull you to shore in terms of like you know no no don't make it seem like I'm drowning I still stand by the fact that it is easier to lose your belly bulge than to change your penis length lah, through your own actions uh, yeah yeah yeah. okay okay maybe maybe I, I triggered you with talking because about that, penis length no because <laughs> that, no, don't try because you got okay. so no, oh, you got so heated about that that analogy yeah. to me doesn't make sense mm, so mm, I have more mm. issue with the analogy and then you trying to use that pay me in the corner now you're making me sound like I'm insecure about my dick <laughs> length yeah, okay. <laughs> okay maybe like change your height uh, change your height maybe not penis length like how huh how how can you change your height it, unless you go for cosmetic surgery, c- cut your femur in half and extend it and all? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm just saying that, yeah, maybe don't talk about penis length. Even like, the height thing, I will thing. still think is not a good an- 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 analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to, to me, that's why the belly bulges in some sense also uh, is quite close to that category of stuff. You uh, To me, like, right, mm. that, you, that they shouldn't uh, be, be hanging the marketing on. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hang, yeah. not hanging the marketing on is one thing, but the analogy is another thing. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 to yeah. me, they're not a comparable analogy. Like. Very, very tricky. Oh, because <laughs> I just think your analogy is not accurate, Terrence. Very angry think, about yeah. this, uh, <laughs> this penis leg analogy that I've used. Like. <laughs> I have no issues with my yeah, penis leg. Like, okay? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I'm also uh, happy, happy yeah, with yeah. that, happy with, yeah. with the reality of it. I mean, I would love to hear, of course, it's, again, it's two guys talking yeah, about it. I would love to hear uh, what you know, women think about it, right? Mm-hmm. That that uh, would they feel offended by someone even pointing out the belly bulge and everything, right? Because mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying is that I don't think I don't think they should point out even be pointing out those belly bulges thing. And yeah, all, that yeah. I agree. Yeah. That yeah, I agree yeah, with yeah, you yeah. on. Yeah, for Just mothers, the analogy. Yeah. Yeah. The analogy yeah. is what I disagree <laughs> on, and I stand by that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. We can have different opinions about it, and that's the beauty of it. That's the point of the podcast. We'd love to hear from actual mothers and yes. how they feel about it, because it's again, it's. I don't want to appear like we're just trying to be woke for the sake of saying yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I I I, ex- I express up front that I don't think the domestic violence thing. I think that's yeah, a stretch. Yeah, yeah. I feel that there's there's like and then you can nitpick anything already. Like, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, why is it using pink? Pink sexist, you know that kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I would also like to hear from people who have considered changing their dick length and height, la, Yeah. To yeah. hear their thoughts on whether analogy makes sense. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. Cool, there is <laughs> dick length big issue for Harish. He wants to know, yeah. So for the big group of y'all that have considered <laughs> lengthening your dicks, like Harish no, wants to hear from you. If you want to hear about the thoughts on this case and the analogy, yeah, then you yeah. need to get both sides, lah. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll just message my dick length changing WhatsApp group. Guys, <laughs> how you feel about Need this? Need your campaign. help. Yeah. Need your help, guys. This hypothetical campaign. Oh, hypothetical campaign. But yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, speaking of yeah, hearing from people, mm. what 
is your one shot comment of recent times? Uh, my uh, one shot comment was something that I think is useful info. It was news to me, uh, which I mean will kind of reinforce what uh, you were saying uh, mm. in the previous podcast five two three. Yeah. Uh, Internet lurker ninety six long time commenter pointed out that in the business times, uh, it was quoted that the swearing in ceremony mm. for uh, PM Wong, the soon to be PM Wong, will take place at the Istana at eight PM on May fifteenth. Oh, yes. So correct. it is going to be at night. Yeah, yeah, it is going to be at night. Because you were saying that it's... I thought it would be during the day. Yeah, 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 Maybe gonna... because they want people to watch. La. Or maybe after that, they have happy hour, oh, go drinks, King, cocktails, PM, like <laughs> LHL after that, is like, guys, table on me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be a night thing. La. Are you going to be yeah. watching all the way? I watch a bit, I watch a bit. I mean, I, like, I'll just leave it on. I'll leave it. Leave the TV on. Mm. I think it'll be quite interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was my one short comment. What about you? Uh, my one short comment is uh, also from uh, Reddit. And it's actually with regards to the, the not the most recent episode, lah, but the previous one that we had before, lah, right? Mm. Um, about the ERP system causing frustration and the security security guards uh, digging, uh, I mean, they're, they're bickering over that, that video, like, right? Mm. Uh, and I think uh, it was quite interesting because uh, off the back of the podcast and, and maybe with their own, their own initiative, some people on Reddit started uh, digging up about like when exactly this whole ERP thing was introduced and which was the minister in charge and, and all that. So Singaporean, uh, was said literally traced back a little bit into when the request for proposals opened in 2014 and, and and then there was apparently an evaluation test for a year and a half in Woodlands mm. and everything. So um, that was quite interesting lah, in the sense that people started to a, like look at actually under whose watch was this approved. Because mm. I think ultimately that's the most important thing, lah, right? Like, mm. like who was the person at the top who was overseeing this and did not have the foresight to see how outdated this system would look like mm. uh, all these years later. Yeah, because I, I think since then there's been someone created an ASMR video of of them interacting with the ERP device in their car, and like you don't even need to to listen to it, but you just watch how unresponsive the screen is sometimes when mm. you're like trying to tap certain buttons, and then like you know they talk about being able to push the screen down, the whole thing just like collapsed at one point when the guy was trying to twist mm. it. You see, so it, it really sh- just without any words it demonstrated how archaic the whole system looks like mm. and it really boggles your mind like how anyone could have used this in an 18 month evaluation test and then thought that hey, oh, this would be a good idea 7 years down or 10 years down the road now, you mm. know? Yeah. yeah I think that comment was was great because uh, it was actually my one show comment the last episode oh already <laughs> yeah. okay okay <laughs> great so that means it's seconded yeah. one show comment no but it, it, it carried on there's still like uh, even like twelve hours ago there were new comments. Oh, so there's a yeah yeah yeah. So, there's more more information, more threads. Yeah. Uh-huh, the sure. award of ERP two was made in February 2016, and the CEO of LTA resigned just after just two years in the job and things like that lah. I see, I see, I see, uh, I see. So there's more stuff coming out at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, continuing. Solid. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm building on your one building on the comment, one shot yeah. comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What about your <laughs> one shot thing, man? Oh, my one shot thing is a bit more original, lah. Yeah. <laughs> one shot thing. Oh. Uh, of interest to you, I'm sure. Uh, this is the 20th anniversary of uh, the first commencement speech that I, I listened to in the while I was studying in the US. Steve Jobs, eh? Bono, speaking at UPenn's commencement in 20, oh. 2004. Yeah, so this is exactly 20 years later, May 17th, 20, Bono. 2004. Bono delivering uh, Penn's commencement speech. And it's very interesting now because... Do you hear that Colombia has just cancelled their graduation ceremony because of all the protests, protests yeah, going on in there now? And so this was, 20, imagine 20 years ago, very bright-eyed me. Oh, so you, know, you attended the graduation? I was helping out because I wanted free accommodation for a couple more weeks. So I oh. volunteered to help out. And I so I sat in and listened oh, to Oh, because after the semester speech. ends, la, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, I mean, Bono, uh, you Bono. Know, coming to school, you're like, oh, god damn, I got to try and listen to it right yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was I mean the but I listened to speech again recently this is a very very old recording and uh, yeah it was pretty awesome and he talks about a lot of things that I feel are even relevant today even more relevant today mm. um, you know 20 years later yeah this somehow popped up my feet and I just yeah uh, wow. listened to it again years, with 20 years of experience and 20 years of understanding how shitty the world can be <laughs> like, <you know. laughs> 20 years it's different it's different oh. Yeah. Uh, so you could tell young 
bright eyed Terrence. One I, thing. I can tell back then there was a lot more like, oh, you know, the world's your oyster. What would you uh, what would you tell him? Oh uh, what I tell him? Yeah. Uh, young bright eyed Terrence listening to Bono. I mean he's probably he, he at that point he was delivering the speech, he's probably my age that I am now, like, right? No, That's telling young thing. Terrence. Yeah. Oh, tell me telling myself yeah. about this speech. Oh, no, you telling Bono. La. Oh, I you thought you were telling wanna, young I thought, Terrence. I thought we'd get Bono on a Oh, podcast. no, no, you telling young Terrence. Uh, no, I think the speech was very good. And, yeah. and, and a lot of things still ring true about the speech. But at the same time, like universities, like, uh, you know, even higher education in general has a very different, um, like, like there's a lot of uh, strange things going on in higher education now. That I think uh, people are realizing when watching what's going on, the protests and all. So it's it's quite a different environment, lah, right? So that's what you would tell young parents. Yeah, you listen to the speech for what it's worth and all, but just remember that yeah, lah, it's a very different world, lah, right? Yeah, uh. correct. Lah. Yeah, that's what I'll tell myself. Lah. <laughs> no real actionable thing or anything, uh. <laughs> No, honestly, honestly, when you listen to these speeches, they are there to sort of just like entertain you, you know, and your parents and everything when you yeah. graduate, inspire a little bit, all that. So take everything with a pinch of salt, you know, you know, it's not, uh, I mean, he also has, there's certain things that people accuse him of. Yeah, yeah. Not, not the, not the best things also, like, right? Mm. So, yeah, you always got to be careful of what you listen to. Huh? Yeah, see, see. That's what I would say, yeah. Cool. Cool. And what's your one shop thing? Uh, my one shop thing is like, uh, I chanced upon this through social media. I didn't know what's happening, but there was the roast of Tom Brady. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was live stream on Netflix. Mm, mm. Uh, it's a three-hour show. Uh, and I watched some of it. Um, I mean, some of it was okay, but if you have just a few minutes, I don't know whether the clip is online. I'll try and find. Um, but the roast by Nikki Glazer, right, mm. was damn good. Who's I mean, Nikki Glazer? She's a stand-up comedian in the oh, US. Okay. Not... Not A-lister, but well-known enough. Okay. Uh, but she made fun of Kevin Hart and Tom Brady, and the jokes were damn good. Yeah. Okay. So, so why would a Singaporean even care about Tom Brady, though? I don't think you need to care about Tom Brady. It's just oh, like okay. the jokes are funny. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, it's jokes about him, right? But okay, so as long as you know that he's one of, considered the greatest quarterback of all time. And quarterback is the the most important person on the, the one, one American of, football team. Yeah, right? correct. The one who gets the ball and then like throws it for the, the people to receive yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's damn handsome and he married Giselle Bunchen who divorced him last year. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and he lost 30 million in a crypto scam. Yeah, yeah. So oh, just, he, yeah, know, he was shelling for FTX. Yeah, uh, so like, you yeah. know that bit and the jokes were quite funny. La. But it's about him. No, the joke's about Kevin Hart also oh, okay. and the other comedians on it. Okay. So just that clip, the rest all I would say, mm, but I thought it was like, eh, shit. And I mean, the fact that Netflix streamed it live, yeah. I thought quite interesting. It's interesting, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So yeah, that's my one joke thing. Cool, cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, all right, that's yes. the end of the podcast. Uh, yeah. So remember, if you enjoyed it, please share it with at least one other person. Yeah. And if you want to work with us, what should they do, Terrence? Uh, check out ministryoffunny.com. So there's two Fs in that, ministryoffunny.com. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.